Welcome to your next tutorial on JavaScript. Today we're going to be discussing data type conversion. Probably one of the most important things you'll need to learn. Well, they're all important, but I find this especially important. So, what if we have a number in a string, literal, and we want to do something with it, like, I don't know, some arithmetic? Well, we don't want to use the string value because, well, that's a whole, that's a different value than the number. So let's figure out how we go about doing this. So I'll create a variable called x and set it equal to 5. And I'll create another variable and set it equal to the string 7. I'll create a third variable called total. And I'll have it add the x and y together. So lastly, I'll create a confirm dialog box. Probably because I haven't uh, used this in a while and I should probably show you. And have it display the total value. So, um, total value x plus y, 5 plus 7 should come out to 12, right? Wait, 57? What? That, that can't be right? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I must have been wrong with this. 5 plus 7 is. Hmm. Well, the reason for this, why this happened, was because since one of the variables was a string, what happened is it was tacked on to the end of the 5. If it were reversed, if it was y plus x, then it would have come out to be 75. And just for clarification, uh, those numbers that you saw weren't even integers. They were strings. Uh, so Because they're added on just like strings put together. So the whole thing was a string. So it wasn't even the number 57. So just bear that in mind. So let's convert this to a 7. Let's figure out how to do that. So I'm going to create a third or a fourth variable and I'll call it a. And I'm going to use a function. Now I know what you're thinking. Whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't even learned functions yet. I saw it. It was further down the playlist. What are you doing? Well, we're not going to be creating our own functions yet. We're just going to be using pre made ones. So don't worry about that. So this function is called parse int. P A R S E capital I. N T. Then within the parentheses, type in the variable that you want converted. So I'll just put in Y. Then I'm going to change this Y right here to the A. I'll click save. And I press F5. And now it's 12. So it worked. I also want you to see that you can put in letters after this as well. Click save. And it'll still work. Now what happens if we put another number in here later? like an 8. Like we have letters in between the first number and the next number. Let's see what happens. We still get 12. And the reason for this is because the parse int function uh, does character counting, uh, is a character counting function. And you don't need to know how to do character counting and whatnot. That's probably something I'll show you how to do in, uh, in a C++ tutorial instead, because that's something where you'd probably use it more. Uh, so you can't you can't have letters in between, it, it, or otherwise it will just stop. It's going to count each character until it comes across its first uh, letter or non-integer, any kind of symbol. I also want to point out that you shouldn't start off with a zero, because that will automatically it will assume that you want to convert it into an octal number, and a zero x will assume that you want to convert it into a hexadecimal value. So unless you want to do that, maybe you do. Don't do it. Okay, so. Let's try this some more. Seven point, I don't know, four eight. Let's see what happens with that. We should get uh, twelve point four eight, right? Twelve. Wait, no, I want a twelve point four eight. There's a point four eight here. Well, the reason for this is because the int will treat the period like any other character, uh, so it will be uh, looked at as a non-integer, and it'll stop. There's another function that will not look that will look past that and that's the parse float and pretty much the only difference with this is that it will convert the um, periods into decimals so let's see what we get 12.48 there it is so it worked and uh, that's that's about it for converting uh, what were we converting oh yeah strings into numbers now what if you want to go the other way around let's say we have two numbers here. Let's make it 5 and 8. If we try adding these two together, x plus y, what if we want 58? What if we want what we had before? 
Well, that's not it. That's 13. In order to do this, we have to use the toString method. Now, this is actually not a function. This is a method, which is a little bit different, and we'll get into those uh, later as well. So how you deal with this is you type in the name of the variable. So you create a new variable. Then you type in the name of the other variable that you want converted. So I'll type in x dot to string, then a pair of quotes, and uh, that's it. I'll type in my other variable, uh, variable b, and I'll set that equal to y dot to string. Put a pair of uh, parens, I'll click save, and when I refresh the page, oh, I didn't, excuse me, then change these back to the a plus b. And when I refresh the page, now I get the 5 next to the 8 again. So that works. Now there's also the evaluate. This one is really interesting. So I'm just going to create one function uh, or one variable right now. And I'm going to call it var, I don't know, math. And I'm going to set this equal to prompt. And I'm going to let the user type in something. Type in a problem. Whoops. Want to make that a string. And then I'll just set the default value to zero. Now, what if someone types in a mathematical expression like, I don't know, 10, 10 plus 4 or something, and you want it to evaluate that? Well, with that plus sign in there, it's going to be automatically converted into a string rather than a number. See, so if you could just type in a number here, it, it will just be converted into an integer. If you type in letters, it'll be a string. 10 plus 4 because that plus is not a number, it'll be converted into a string automatically by the prompt method, by the um, the prompt function. So uh, we are going to want to display this. So conf uh, confirm, and we're going to want to show. Let's just set the total to math here. So I'll click save, and when I refresh the page. I'll type in, I don't know, 67. I get 67. If I refresh the page and type in 5 plus 8, I just get that 5 plus 8 back. Well, what if I wanted to evaluate that? Well, what I can do is with this total, I can throw EVAL, which is short for evaluate. And what it will do is automatically solve it, convert it into numbers in the symbols and whatnot and it'll uh, do the math for you so if I refresh the page and uh, what did I do before 10 plus 4 and I get 14 that is really cool because that is a lot of work to do that trust me that's a lot of work to do that's a lot of code behind that and you can do uh, order of operations 10 plus 20 divided by 4 it should do the division first, right? Which would come out to 5. 5 plus 10 should be 15. And it does it perfectly. Um, and that that's that's about it. Uh, these are a bunch of different conversions. Integers to strings, strings to integers, and even evaluating expressions. So I hope this was helpful for you, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.